And we are back. Hello, everyone. Good to see ya. I'm gonna dive into some more uh, fictional creatures. I know we'd need more time for this, so uh, I think this is a good continuation. There's a couple little tricks that I didn't talk about last time that were are really good. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited about this. So Iona, Ion, uh, Ion, good to see you. Uh, oh no, you're too kind, by the way. This is all, this is all scripted. I just do what the script says right over here, right? So anyways, this should be fine and should be fantastic, by the way. And let's go ahead and get this started with our new version, our new animal, if you will, switching it up a little bit, um, diving into something that's actually uh, more complex. So right in here, doing something like this, right? And again, this is just your preview. Here's your, your preview, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll kind of talk to you about, you know. Actually, I'm going to start this from scratch. Let's go ahead and close that. We'll go to File New. Let's get this party started. Guess what? This file size doesn't matter. I'm actually going to go in uh, to my libraries. I have a bunch of animals right in here uh, that I think I might use. I got some cool backgrounds in here as well, right, that I could play with. So sometimes I'll be inspired by a background. Other times it'll just be, you know, other things online. Let's get rid of that. Uh, Chimera is one thing I was thinking about doing, but that's similar to the Griffin that I just did. The Griffin actually technically has, um, has an eagle head, right? The, there's the Quetzalcoatl. I don't know if I'm saying that right, <laughs> but there's a number of cool like fictional animals that we can make and stuff like that. But anyways, coming back in here, this is what I want to do. I kind of want to take, um, take like a rhino and make it look like it's a moving mountain is the idea. Okay. I also have this lion again. So we'll just switch it up. We'll, we'll pick a rhino right here. Okay. Let me actually grab a background. Let's grab this background, right? Starting right here. And I'll just do a copy new paste background saving this to my desktop there we go okay oh the griffin was your college mascot that sounds awesome what Ketz, Ketz, Ketzel Co Otl? Ketzel Co Otl. that's how you say it i'm way off all right all right, let's do our rhinosaurus, because let's face it, rhinos don't look like they should exist, but they do. <laughs> it's like we're living with dinosaurs, and they're called rhinos. Like, look at this guy. It's ridiculous. Look at him. He's not real. It's not a real thing, is it? Yeah, sure it is. Copy. Let's close these other files. Don't need them. Don't need them. Those other forests are kind of cool. I might take bits from them. But let's try to do this as fast as we can because this is a master class. Okay, pasting in that rhino. And again, just like I did before, the first place I'll start is from remove background. Boom, like that. Okay, that gets me, I would say, 90% there. I might have to disable the layer mask to realize that it missed its foot, right? So I'll come in with the quick selection tool, right? I use a lot of these, like the quick selection. Man, I just, yeah, I just love it. Right, so we'll bring that back just by filling with white. There, we brought it back. Everything looks pretty good. We could always tighten up some of this. Some of this you're not gonna see, so I'm not gonna worry too much about it, but he's already on white, so that was super easy, right? I'll just apply that layer mask. Nope. Because guess what? I'm not gonna need any white. We're gonna be fine. Yeah, some peat moss. Like, let's make him look awesome. Right? Let's even exaggerate some of the features too. Uh, they like being tickled in the mouth. Yeah, right, Monica. You're funny. Because all I really want to do is extend his horns like so. Let's undo that one. So we have some constraints. We'll just kind of extend his horns and make them look a little bit more awesome. Right? Just like that. That looks pretty good. Okay, let's grab some other. Some it's ridiculous. Boom. What do we do? Remove background. Boom. Apply. Boom. 
Command T, rotate, shrink it down. Yeah, I'm doing it destructively. <laughs> I don't got that kind of time to make everything a smart object, do I? Again, I don't need white. I don't need the color from those horns. I just don't. Uh, flipping it over here, bring that over, excuse me, from the antlers. Apologies. Make it like that. So the reason I picked this background um, is, again, like, if you have a scene that has lots of drama and has light coming from an angle um, and there's like water or there's a tree that maybe I can kind of put kind of in front of this uh, rhino, it's going to just, it's going to sell the fantasy, right? So we use those, I use those little like tips and tricks, um, the environment that I can play with to make it look real. So he's going to be easier to make look fantastic on this awesome background with things in front of him and behind him. All right. I'm not worried too much about that because I'm still working on this creature in and of itself. Let's go ahead and grab... Yeah, let's get an alligator. Removing that background. Boom, boom. Close. Don't worry about saving it. Yeah. Yeah. He's prehistoric. Let's give him a an alligator tail, right? I actually don't even need the front part. Sorry, buddy, I don't want to hurt you, but I'm just going to do that. Okay, shrink this down. If at any time I feel like I might need pixels, I might convert it to a smart object, right? In this case, I'm going to do the same thing. I set up a shortcut key for Puppet Warp, by the way. And now I can take this and start pinning it down, like so, moving this up, just like that. Pinning it up here. Let's stretch it out, too. Hmm? Stretch it. Stretch it. Bending it into place like that. And let's have his tail hang low like that. That's what we're doing. Kind of like that. Does that work for you? Boom. That looks pretty good. Adding a layer mask. Why don't I have a shortcut key for layer mask? I should. Uh, so Carol's in Florida. <laughs> oh, how is Florida doing? How is Florida these days? Florida feels like the Wild West to me lately. <laughs> there are no rules in Florida. Please confirm if that's the case. I don't know, but it just it seems so much like the Wild West. It's like, we're like, whatever, we're doing what we want in Florida. Is that how it is? <laughs> this animal actually lives in Florida. Forgot to tell you that. Use the X key and you can always flip these colors. You're often painting with black and white. Keep hitting X. I don't remember the shortcut key to default to black and white, at least not in Photoshop and Illustrator. It's just Shift X. It's not the same here. But let's just do something kind of like that. Put this back there, right? And maybe warp him a little bit more. Because I have this weird bump right there that I want to get rid of. So I end up using Puppet Warp a lot, just so you know, um, but it just kind of depends on what the situation calls for. Again, a situation where uh, I think I did a pretty good job picking the right photos because these already uh, kind of like match up in terms of tone, right? Okay, I still have this alligator here and I'm thinking I want to use the zoop, middle of its body to cover up the rest of it. Right? So again, I could use I could use Puppet Warp. My second go-to is just the warp tool right here. So go down to edit, transform, warp. Okay? You're gonna get all these control points that you could start to bend. So I really need to make this pretty drastic. I, I do like this because it it since I have these Bezier points, I'm gonna get those nice curves, right? So it's gonna be able to kind of curve around that body. And by the way, you could just select the line. Don't think you have to always select those control points. You just grab that line and do like so. Okay. Also for this, I need to make sure he's big and chubby. <laughs> so I'm going to add a couple vertical lines right here. Boom. Split warp vertically there. Split one there. 
And then I'll just grab that and kind of pull it like that is what I'm going for. Just trying to make him look like just more chubby. <laughs> Hopefully that works for you. We're making some fun, fantastic animals here. Hopefully you guys are into this. I'm not really, I keep on saying that I'm not really into like fantasy type stuff, but I think I kind of am. Truth be told. Bring that down like so. And by the way, let's go ahead and clip it. Let's see what happens if it, how it looks clipped to the body. There it is clipped to the body, which I actually don't like that as much. Move this in. We're making our fun prehistoric monster of a being. All right. So let's warp this a little bit more because I just have that line. So again, just like I was doing with the uh, puppet warp tool, you add points to pin things down so they don't move. I do the same thing in here uh, with the warp tool because I think it's good from here over, but from uh, this left side, that's where that's why I'll add that pin or that line and I'll bring it down like so, like that, okay? I still have this issue with the ears, numbers of ways I can fix, number of ways I can fix that. Let's actually just try to blend just kind of make that disappear, maybe like that. Command L, brighten him up. Cancel. There we go. Brightening him up a little bit destructively, why not? I apologize. There we have our dinosaur-like uh, creature, right? Lots of shading needs to still happen. I need to add more elements and it's gonna get more tricky as we go along, right? Uh, for one, I wanna, I wanna, he's supposed to be like a big, I want, uh, my original concept is to have him like a big moving mountain. And he, it looks like he has trees kind of growing out of him, you know, cause he moves slow. I don't know, something like that. So we'll search for branches right up here. Branch, branches, ba ba. There's a branch, NCH. Uh, here's another one. I'm not sure if, um, uh, if there should be flowers. <laughs> uh, yeah, this might happen. I just think it needs a pop of color, huh? Flowers. Oh yeah, actually, thank you. I do need a name for this amazing beast. What's up, Lucas? Good to see you here. Hello, hello. Sorry. Cool. Um, yeah, so I just think it might need like a little bit of color, like just a little, a little pop of color. So that's why I might have that. I have these other ones cut out. This one is not cut out right here, but that's easy enough, right? Again, I just rasterize layer properties. Boom, remove background, right? It did a pretty good job. It only missed like one little spot. So it gets me 95% of the way there. And then I can come in usually with my quick selection tool because I only have an hour to do this. Do you guys? Ah, it's too large probably. There we go. Okay, so there's two, here, here's, here's another pro tip, by the way. It's a monstrosity, that's a beast. So sometimes when you're working with a brush, you won't see the actual brush, you'll see these crosshairs. And it's because you have your caps lock key on. So turn that off. Another issue I have is my brush is so large that it's like off the screen. So those are usually my two problems that I have when I don't see my brush. Okay, there's also a shortcut key to uh, view the um, zoop, view the size as well, but uh, I don't remember it. I think it's like shift, control, option, right click, something. <laughs> uh, anyways, okay, so we have this. We have these gnarly br branches that we're going to attach to this, uh, our lovely... 
Rhino. He needs to be like, I don't know, he needs a name for one. Let's shrink this down. And we want it to kind of mimic these curves and everything. So again, just giving me that fine control using Puppet Warp to kind of bend this into place like that. And by the way, there we go. That looks, that's not bad. Uh, yes. You guys have any questions? Rhino, Rhino, Servido, Arbor, Gatosaur, Steve, Bob. <laughs> yeah, when I said give him a name, maybe his name is just like Bob. <laughs> What's your name? You must have some majestic name. No, my name is Bob. I'm, yeah, I'm from these parts, you know. Right, blending these in. In this case, use sometimes use levels just to tweak it to get it to be the same color as that horn, like that. Now that looks pretty good. We do the same to the other side. Command J, Command T, right click, flip horizontal, bring it over here, right? Delete the layer mask on top of everything else and use Puppet Warp and just warp it in a different way to make it look like a different branch, of course. All right, bring that down like that, bring that over. You also have the option right up here, if you want to get crazy with Puppet Warp, change this to Distort. If I change that to Distort, it, it gets like really nuts, right? We see what's happening there. Zoop, zoop, zoop. Right? Sure, why not? Uh, I don't think these leaves are doing it any favors. What do you think? Uh, what's the difference between Puppet Tool and Warp? Puppet Tool is going to give you the pins that you poke in it, and then Warp's going to give you lines that allow you to bend the whole, bend the image. And um, so yeah, it's just whether you want to use these Bezier lines or if you want to use pins to pull things around, okay? He is an everything a source. So I don't know if he, I don't, I don't know if these leaves are working. Um, they definitely don't need to be that bright. I'm, I'm just, I'm kind of thinking through that. <sighs> Anyways, we leave them there now. Uh, it's definitely, they're definitely too saturated. So I'll take the saturation down off of those. Right. And they need to be darker. So I'm not sure. Uh... Dino Reno. Dino Reno? <laughs> yeah, we could go with that. Dino Reno. Uh, so many issues with this. I don't, I think these leaves are getting a little bit distracting, but let's add some more branches in here because we're just here to have fun, right? And use our creativity, right? To do and make something kind of cool, right? Let's rasterize this layer. Let's take this branch. We'll just chop this branch off. just so we could have a little bit more control. I'll break this up in a couple different pieces. Like that. There we go. Now we have these even more gnarly branches that are just gonna be connected over here, etc. There we go. Uh, I can't wait until we, we get into uh, just some of the lighting I'm not worried too much about it right now, but the lighting is really going to save me. Uh, and it's honestly where you're going to see the biggest results. When I get into the lighting here, it's I'm really going to be able to sell it is, is my hope, right? Because already you could see all I've been using is levels to make things look like they match. And we can really get into... Uh... Oh yeah, his tail's coming out of his stomach. Thank you. Good eye. Uh, typically, I'd separate this out. I'd have the tail be one part and the body be another part. But uh, for the sake of time, I'm just going to erase down there, and I think that should do it. Make sure this has a hard edge. There we go. Good catch. Thank you for that. All right. Cool. Throw, throw some contrast in on this. There, we, there it is. On that antler. 
So much needs to happen in here still. We need to add more branches, right? Like these guys, beautiful. Look at how awesome that is. Like just really cool and like gnarly, if you will. And uh, yeah, keep the suggestions coming because you're probably seeing things that I am not. All right. Uh, okay, let's check out things. All right, let me take a drink of coffee. Hello. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, now the branches need a spider web. Yeah. I want to do like moss, by the way, because I think moss is a good example of just something that's going to be pretty complex. Like, how do we sell moss growing on this character? All right. Uh, I'm not crazy about this part either. Work it, work it, make it happen. Work it, work it. All right, so that, that works out okay so far. All right, next up, you know I definitely want to add this. Ah, look at this. Let's flip this horizontally. Oh yeah, I can't wait to add some cool stuff like that. Ah, oh, come on now. It wouldn't be a Paul stream if I didn't have, uh, yes, exactly, Brianne. Thank you. Wouldn't be a Paul stream if I wasn't adding a um, some flowers in here, All right? Okay, work on those a little bit later, actually, because I want to get to the moss. This again, might be a little much, but we're, we're having fun here. Okay, turn that off. Let's get some moss in here. Here's some moss, right? How do we extract this moss? It's going to be the same process, largely. Going into properties, remove background, seeing what happens. Maybe I'll get lucky. Hey, perfect. I actually just want to isolate some of this, right? But you have lights and darks back there. This is going to be pretty complex to isolate, but it's still going to be good, meaning going into select and mask. Coming in here, sometimes using the brush. To remove and trying what I can actually when it, I'll use the brush to actually remove a lot of these white spots then I'll go into the refine edge tool to try to remove this other junk right so just using that refine edge I know refine edge isn't gonna get these like white dots that's why I'm gonna have to just kind of manually have to go in there and get rid of it but really, there's only a couple of pieces that I need. Okay, so some of that I'm going to have to select manually. So again, going back to my brush, option key, getting rid of it like so. Stay tuned for uh, Jason's stream is up next too. Just shout out to him. And then we have uh, oh, Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge, which is cool. And then we have HP. Howard Pinsky doing his thing. HB with little XD. So that'll be fun. And uh, some office hours and then uh, daily creative challenge. Ooh, drawing along. Is that right? This afternoon, today at 3.30? Oh, wow. Learn how to draw. Actually, this afternoon is all about learning how to draw, which is cool. So. Kyle could probably draw this. I think Kyle and I should have a race. Like, I'll just do, I'll just, I'll just manipulate something into existence, and he will draw it, and we'll see how each one of ours comes out. Let's shift the edge, just tighten that up, getting rid of this last little part right down here. Let's 
get that moss in there. Let's make it happen. Let's make some dreams come true today, folks. Does that sound good? Let's apply this. Yeah, I'm just applying that layer mask. Life's too short to make things smart objects <laughs> all the time. Okay, Command J. I will have backups because I will actually jump layers um, to uh, preserve them, if you will. Apply layer mask. I did that twice. There we go. I have some moss now. Sorry that took a while, but we went from simple extracting to more complex stuff. In fact, let's take this one, let's flip it horizontally. Because this looks like it could kind of hang off of his horn right up here. Okay. Puppet warp shortcut key. Do something like that. Notice how dark this is. I could try playing with blend modes and see if we get anything. Nope, I might have to knock it out another way. But it is not bad. Um, also, when it comes to manipulating, I can go into uh, just Command T to transform. And then if you hold down the uh, Option key, or excuse me, command key, you could pull in and just distort the corners like I'm doing right now. This is going to work. Oh, undo. There we go. Just getting rid of some of this black. There we go. That's, that's going to work just fine. Okay, cool. Done, done. Sorry, I'm not looking up at the chat. Just trying to get this done quickly. Uh, let me know if you have questions. Quote of the day, life's too short to make smart objects all the time. That's right. It's too short, I got too much to do. I don't have time to like be preserving all my layers. What's funny about a lot of this, it's like there's things that you teach, I feel, and then how the real world works, right? Anyways, there's some moss. Oop. Guess what, I have that other moss right over here, as well as this one. Command T, let's flip it horizontally. Oh, look at that, all right. I got something weird over here, so we'll delete it. This one's just gonna go on the back side, so. Wait for it, here we go. Get rid of it, get rid of it. Do your magic. Refine Edge just did its magic. Let's take it to the back. Boom. It's a shortcut key that I can't tell you about because I'm, I'm trying to keep a little bit of an advantage over you by not sh telling you everything. Just kidding. But I'm just trying to make <laughs> this all a little darker. Oops. All right, cool. Done, done. All right, let's 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 move on. Let's work on so many other things. Is it male or female? I have no idea. Uh, yeah, I could use the blend if sliders. I want to do, I actually, since I have this guy all squared away, I need to uh, do lots of things. <laughs> um, but what's what are some of the big things that are standing out right now? It's definitely the color. Definitely there's not enough contrast between the horns, excuse me, the... Um, the antlers, if you will, and the branches and his body. So I need to add just some, some shading in there, right? So I could do a command click to just jump to that layer. A lot of times I'll add a, an additional layer right over here because what I wanna do is I wanna 
clip that to my antler layer and then hit B for brush, start painting uh, like some shading in here, right? So just making that a little bit darker because it just needs to be like, have a little bit more separation. So that's one way to just kind of, even that alone looks better if you ask me, right? Because it's like separating it out just a touch, okay? Okay, cool. Let's move on. Let's take all of this content and group it. And what did we decide this guy is? Rhinosaurus, Dinero, <laughs> Dino Reno, <laughs> Rhinosaurus. There we go. Our Rhinosaurus Rex. I'm gonna add a levels. Oh, not a levels, sorry. I'm gonna add some curves in here. And I'm gonna clip these curves bup, right to that, uh, our Rhinosaurus. Now I can make, of course, our whole rhino darker, right? That's pretty straightforward. I could end up with a number of layers. Uh, Right, so this already looks like a thousand times better, wouldn't you say? Tranosaurus Rex. I'm really into this. Let me show you something else that's gonna be amazing, because all I'm, actually there's a couple things I could do. I could go into, say, the reds, the greens, the blues, right? We can kind of take down that green and see what that looks like, take up the green, right? We're tinting it, those different colors. Might want to go into the reds and maybe bring that up a little bit or down, just depending on what we're going for, right? So you can start to manipulate some of those options, right? That's one thing you could do. Or what you could do, and I'm just going to make a new curves adjustment layer. This is what I love. This is the, this to me has been the latest uh, magic button for me. Uh, <laughs> So check this out. I can adjust accordingly like that, right? But I really want to match it to the background. So this is what I'm going to try. I think this, I think it typically works out pretty good. We'll just reset it. We'll go right up here to our curves and I'm going to go into this auto options. So I'm going to use the option and click right here to bring up this panel, right? So this is the auto color correction options. It's like, I can now manipulate this better using a couple of these settings, right? Enhance, I go into find dark and light colors because I want to match the dark and lights with the background. Sorry, I already had this saved, but from here I'll go in and by the way, I'll hit cancel. I need to make sure I'm on this curves layer, not the layer mask. So click right there, otherwise your sampling is not going to work out okay. So I'll click right there, find dark and light colors for the shadows. We're gonna click shadow like so, right? And we could tweak this any way we want, but it's not gonna be pure black, right? It'll be close, but it's not gonna be pure black. That looks awfully dark still, right? So again, it makes a difference. The highlights really make a difference. So right in here, as I click around, you could see what happens. But ultimately, if I click the highlights, the light part back there, it's going to, it basically samples that color, right? So now we kind of have the uh, brightness and the contrast we're kind of looking for. So anyways, I thought this was like super helpful, right? I'll even kind of go right here in the middle ground like so. Click OK, click OK. That looks good. Don't resample everything. So now we have this one and then we have this one and we can combine those two as well, right? So Tracy, if you like that, you're gonna love this next part because now we need to have this light, you know, shining over this glorious beast, right? The beast needs a shadow, he needs so many things. Let's, let's, let's burn through this, shall we? Okay, so. All right, okay. This is great. New layer. This is what I'm going to do. You might do it differently. Um, I'm going to just fill a layer filled with like uh, the highlight color. And I'm going to change this to something else. I'm just trying this, by the way. <laughs> We're going to try this out. 
Okay, so I just basically wanted to kind of tint this, you know, I'm, I'm working on the highlight colors, what I'm doing. I have this separate layer because I could jump into this layer, select a brush, you know, and I can paint some darker tones in here if I want to, right? And I can paint some lighter tones, some more vibrant ones. Maybe they're a different color right up here, right? So I can change. This back part might be a little bit more green, right? So we just don't want it to all to be one color. That's why I have this layer, right? Even on this side, it's actually going to be a little bit cooler, right? So we have that squared away. I have that clipped. Uh, I can turn on these things, right? This makes them all darker. But this is where I'll just start play, to play with the highlights and the darks. So I'm going to uh, B. Get rid of some of that. Clicking right here, right here. For these two, now I'm going to paint Command B. I was not just actually B, not Command B. I'll paint with black to bring in some highlights. Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to worry about that layer. It's this layer right here. This is the layer that makes everything dark. So right in here, I'm going to paint and just kind of add some highlights and depth. I really need to make this even more intense, by the way. Let's make it even darker. All right, now I can come in here, paint like this edge if I want to. Make that look like it has a highlight. On his horn, right down here. Right, we can still give it a little bit more of a highlight on his face. We'll just create that depth right here on the ear. Let's crank up the flow, right? Let's make sure this is nice and bright right up here on the top, okay? So that's all I'm doing. Uh, I could probably separate this out a little bit more, by the way, by applying it to the individual layer layers, but that's gonna take too much time. All right, so if you join me over on uh, Adobe, excuse me, on <laughs> YouTube, come over to Adobe Live. Because uh, go over, come over to Behance, if you will. But now I can just kind of add those highlights where I want them to have highlights. And it can be dark in spots. So that's all I'm adding, it's adding depth right in here. Now, this is gonna look airbrushed if I keep airbrushing it, right? If I keep this same brush, it's always gonna look like airbrushed, okay? And it's all gonna have that smooth feel. So it's not gonna be that good, right? It's not gonna look that realistic. So I need to vary my brushes right in here. And you have access to these. I can go to uh, this Supreme Spatter and Texture because that's what I wanna do. I don't wanna have everything flat and smooth. I wanna give it some texture, right? So see what I'm doing right there? We can paint with black, by the way, right in here. So it's adding those that texture, it's awesome, right? I can also come in here and use this smudge tool. Oh, geez, wrong brush. And kind of smudge it as well. So I can kind of get this cool texture just by using these brushes and painting accordingly. So hopefully that makes sense using this spatter brush right in here just to give it some texture. That's all I'm doing, right? I don't even know if you're seeing it on the stream that much right in here see it's just like let's give it some texture down here right we might want some of that light but then we might want, might want to smudge it a little bit and that's all i've been doing just giving it a little bit of a smudge making it look like there's just a variation in color right there right cool same thing right up here again just kind of spatter give it that cool gritty texture smudge it if i need to but I'm into it, okay? Might be doing this a little bit too much, that's okay. There we go. See, looking more realistic. Uh, 
All right. Okay, it's looking cool now, that's good. Okay, so uh, let's throw the shadow in there. Our Rhinosaurus. Even though I know my uh, Rhinosaurus will change, that's okay, because this shadow, Command J, merge layers, take him out of there, and again, this is our before, and this is our after. Right, we could always change this, but anyways, let's take this hue, take this, make it black. Actually, not bla make it black. Right, I need to take this up a little bit. It's actually not pure black. Let's do a little bit of a blur. Slight blur. Command T, flip it vertically. There we have it. All right, this is a case where uh, we've talked about the Puppet Warp tool. I would probably go in and transform this and using just the warp, right? So that's gonna give you all these points because I want this tail to be attached right down here. So I'll move that like that. Command zero will enable me to grab all these points and adjust. Right? It's doing something kind of like that. All right, cool. Bring that underneath. I could have probably warped that some more, but that's okay. Heck, let's do puppet warp. I really need to get these feet under here, so let's just crank these over like that. That looks good, okay? Even using a brush and painting a little bit as well. Okay, checking time. I have 10 minutes, right? 10 minutes to get this knocked out. So much work to do, but we're getting a lot done, so this feels good, right? A little bit of paint, a little bit of destructive editing, you know, just, 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 ah, let's get rid of that shadow, right? Let's blur this out. We want to really do some local specific blurs. We also have the blur tool. You can always crank the strength up a lot and uh, come in and blur it. I'd probably even use the smudge tool here as well. So I could smudge this over and it does a little bit of a blur with the smudging as well. So it kind of blurs those edges, right? Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, stop. There we go, we're getting it. Change the opacity down. In fact, you know what? Let's keep the opacity up. Let's add a layer mask. Let's hit B for brush again. And just start to like removing some of this. Maybe I'll take it down a little bit. There we go. That's, that's looking a little better, all right? Hopefully you guys are into it. Uh, let me know what's the, it's really coming together. Okay, good. I'm glad it's coming together. Uh, again, using these tools, I end up using a lot of these when it comes to shadows. I'll blur things, I'll smudge them, right? It's not a simple flip and blur. Uh, I could probably do better with the color of the shadows too, but we just, we want some of that peeking through. And it's, it's fun to get this smudge tool and just come in here and just like pull it like that, right? And erase it if we need to as well, right? Take this down, like so. A lot of this I know that, you know, it's like even the feet are gonna be darker down there. So uh, coming back up here to our rhino, adding a layer. I'll just call this shading. We'll just make it a little darker right down there so it blends in more with the background. Okay, so it's a little darker like that, okay? Cool, cool, all right. Ah, uh, so we, yeah, we've done a lot of work. We're creating fantastic creatures, right? A couple more things I do. Actually, no, I'm not sure if, I don't know what you guys think about, like, I don't know, do I, do I throw this in there? Is that, is this doing it any favors? Let's 
What do you guys think? So the question is whether I should add flowers. <laughs> um, or add just like a little bit of color in there. I don't know. Let's add some more moss though. Let's do that really fast. Enjoying the tunes. I have no idea what's playing. Like that. I don't know if that moss is really working, but I uh, had to throw it in there, right? So we've got some moss. What else do we need? We need to sharpen this for sure. Uh, you know, definitely needs to be sharpened. Let's take a look. I'm um, just kind of taking a look at some of these soft light. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so I'm kind of winding down. Actually, you know what? This is what I'm going to add. We need a little like rim light. Because if this is really that bright, I need to have like just some solid highlights. That's really what I'd love to add, right? Just some nice highlights. We have our shading. Could we have highlights? Let's get really intense in here. So there's our highlight. That's just white. I'll change this down to overlay. Okay, so we'll take that to overlay. Soft light will also work, right? But I like, I think I'm going to do overlay because this just, just gives it some pop. It's a race. Checking the time, I have five-ish minutes. Then Jason is up. Right in here, we can just add some highlights right in like so. It needs to be bright right there, yeah? Bright. Right here, maybe. Giving it some depth. Right, like that on the ear. Right over here. And here, you get the idea. Yeah, some highlights back there. 
Let me know what you think. I think I'm like winding down. I think this is about done, right? Uh, yeah, so you, you guys dig? Do you dig? I just love these like highlights that it adds. I'd still jump in and try uh, like a spatter brush too, right? I can always try that just to give it like a little bit of texture because things get a little bit too smooth if you keep on just using a regular brush. All right, cool. Boop, move that over, boom. All right, let's add one more thing too. Uh, this is what I would do. I would try this as well. This is just another little fun trick because we have these rays of light. Let's create a solid background of black. And we'll go to filter, we'll go to render, we'll render out a lens flare. Okay. With the lens flare, we'll position it like so. Why not? And then we'll take this down to lighten or screen. Okay, lighten seems to work. Actually, I'm not crazy about that position. Let's redo it. Filter, render, lens flare. Up a little higher, take down the brightness as well. It's a little too bright. We don't want it to overwhelm everything. And then we will go, we have lighten like so. So that's what we could use. We kind of get that just like burst right there, shifting the color a little bit so it's a little bit more yellow. Kind of like that. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so last thing I'll do, two, I'll do two more things as I'm winding down. We're gonna throw in a color lookup table just to see if any of this will make it look better. So this does not, but we have crisp winter. So we could take that, since it's mostly um, yellows, gets rid of a lot of those. This kind of gives it some punch, which isn't bad, right? Crisp winter. We could drop the blues, but you know what? We need those blues. Let's go into fall colors. Little, nope. Too fake. Too fake. Too fake. Horror blue? Why not? Oh, look at this. That's There's horror blue, which is interesting. Right, another thing I'll do too. I'll, I'll cheat, by the way. I'll select everything. Uh, I will do a, let's just, I'll put everything on a merged layer. There's everything on a merged layer. And um, I'll actually kind of just go in and just sharpen it just for fun, right? Because if I'm going to post this to like, um, I don't know, Instagram, which I will, by the way. Uh, I want to make sure it's like extra crisp and all that good stuff. And actually I would play with the um, resolution. And the format. All right, just make it a little more crispy. This one is really moody. This one's kind of cool. What do you guys think? I don't know. I'm torn. I am torn, but it's looking pretty good. I'm kind of into it. You guys into it? There we go. Sorry. Yeah, I'm kind of into this. What do you guys think? Yeah, good. All right. So, uh, yeah, heck yeah. I'll just copy. This is one way of uh, getting it on my phone when I post it to Instagram. I'll use this right up here a lot. I'll typically just airdrop it to myself, right? Airdrop. Boom. Wait for it. Wait for it. Uh, sorry, I don't have my phone connected, but there I can just go ahead and send it to my phone because uh, I'm going to post it to Instagram later. So there it is. Pops up on my phone. That's cool. And honestly, what I would do is I would probably just have a version. Uh, I'd probably crop this down a little bit. Uh, if I am going to post this to Instagram, I probably want to um, change the format. I don't know. Maybe, maybe like that. I don't know. We're kind of losing a lot of the specialness. But uh, that's all I have for you. 
Uh, just so you know what you can also do, I'm down to my last minute anyways. Flatten image, go to image, image adjustments, HDR toning. That also can really make something pop as well. Look at what a difference that makes. So again, kind of cool. Thanks everybody. I'm glad you guys had a good time. Um, check it out on uh, on the on the gram and elsewhere. Stick around for Jason's up next. It's gonna be amazing. Such a fun day we have planned for you, per usual. So cool. All right, everyone. Have a good one. Hopefully, you have a magical day, and hopefully, you don't run into this creature. But if you do, it's okay because he's actually very nice. All right, guys. Have a good one, and um, yeah, I just appreciate you. And Jason is up next. Thanks so much, everyone.